the top stories. Police investigating armed robbery in Nevis. Abattoir acquires new refrigerated truck and Prime Minister to hold monthly press conference on Tuesday. The details on these stories and more after the break. In your formative years, we were there. When you got the good news and the bad, we were right there with you. Through all your great adventures, we were always right by your side. Now that life has thrown us a curveball, we are still here. And as we navigate this difficult period, the SKCCU will continue to be there for you and your family to help you through. We will assist you in safely and efficiently accessing your funds through our digital platforms, online banking, mobile banking, ATMs, and even our drive-through services. We can get through this together with responsible financial decisions by making food and medication a priority, practicing proper hygiene, maintaining social distancing, and constant prayer. We are here for you. We are still here. We will get through this together. SKCCU will continue to be your financial partner for life. Without limits, happy and free. The skin you're in with no apology. The one to seize the day. Grab an LLB. Live, love, be. Through a lemon, lime, and bitters, live, love, be. Summer is ending, but the deals are just beginning with the court's end of summer sale. Get up to 50% off your favorite items to include patio furnishings, pools, coolers, TVs, mattresses, and more. Plus, shop today with a ready finance and pay nothing for 60 days. Take advantage of these sizzling summer deals for a limited time only. Shop in store and online at shopcourts.com. Conditions apply. Courts, bringing value home. Hello and welcome to the ZIZ Channel 5 newscast. I'm Carla Berridge. The police in Nevis are investigating an armed robbery that occurred at a restaurant in the Cades Bay area on September 24th. The police say sometime close to 11 p.m. on Friday, two masked assailants, one with what appeared to be a firearm and the other with a machete, rushed through the main entrance of the restaurant and robbed the owners of a sum of money before fleeing the scene. No one was injured during the incident. Persons with information about this incident are urged to contact the Cotton Ground Police Station at 469-5269, the nearest police station, or the crime hotline at 707. Investigations into the matter are ongoing. The abattoir within the Ministry of Agriculture has received a new refrigerated van. The acquisition of the van is part of efforts to enhance the work of the abattoir, specifically taking meat products to and from the site. A handing over ceremony was held on the abattoir grounds on Monday morning. In presenting the key to the vehicle, Prime Minister Dr. the Honorable Timothy Harris noted that with the new van, transport of meats will be improved, thus enhancing the overall efficiency of the abattoir. This new truck that has been now added to your fleet of vehicles here would certainly help in you pursuing your mandate. Clearly, the refrigerated facility would allow for fisher, um, fresher meat, higher quality, and of course maintain a consistent quality here. So it is an important addition and the government is prepared to work with you to do more. Minister of Agriculture Honorable Alexis Jeffers said the new vehicle falls under the government's stimulus package to boost the sector and his ministry is committed to further development of the agricultural sector in the Federation. 
And I want to, at this point, thank the Prime Minister and Minister of Finance, who would have put together a stimulus package to uh, uh, enhance what we are doing in agriculture. Uh, this is a part of that package, and we want to bring this to the general public to show you that we are serious about agriculture and serious in our pursuit to ensure agriculture continue to grow here in the Federation. The vehicle is valued at 180,000 EC dollars. Prime Minister Dr. The Honorable Timothy Harris will hold a press conference on Tuesday, September 28th from 3 p.m. in the conference room at the National Emergency Management Agency, NEMA. At Tuesday's press conference, Prime Minister Harris will update citizens and residents on a number of matters of national importance. Other members of cabinet are also expected to be in attendance. Prime Minister Harris's press conference will be carried live on ZIZ Radio, 96.1 FM, and other participating radio stations, ZIZ TV Channel 5, at www.zizonline.com, and the Facebook and YouTube pages of SKNIS and ZIZ. After the break, Brantley interviewed by Indian News Network, and Sniper breaks ground on Vision Park. Stay with us. Triple the joy at home as you elevate your experience with Flow's new Triple Play Bundles. For the first time ever, bundle up and save on internet, TV, and home phone together for more satisfaction. For as low as $175, enjoy up to 35 megabits per second super fast internet, 70 TV channels with HD entertainment, and free landline minutes with the all-in bundle. Visit your nearest Flow store to sign up for a Triple Play Bundle. Conditions apply. Hero. September is the month of heroes in St. Kitts and Nevis. And for the months of September to October, Bosworth Automotive wants you to be a hero too. Yes, drive like a hero at the massive Bosworth Automotive Be a Hero sales event. Go to Bosworth Automotive today and drive away like a hero with up to $35,000 discount on select models. Your choice of either free gas for three months or up to $1,000 in free groceries. Pay just 10% VAT. Yeah, just 10% VAT. Free servicing for one year. Free bill of sale. Free registration, licensing, and tinting. Zero down payment. That's right. Absolutely zero down payment. And much, much more. Drive away like a hero from Hosford's Be a Hero sales event. The biggest, most heroic sales event ever in the Federation. Terms and conditions apply. See store for details. Welcome back. Minister of Foreign Affairs Honorable Mark Brantley met with Palki Sharma Yupadye, the executive editor of We on TV, in an interview on Saturday to discuss the COVID-19 pandemic, climate change, the growing Indian community in St. Kitts and Nevis, trade and other issues. The interview highlighted the ongoing relationship between the Caribbean and India. Minister Brantley spoke of some challenges as it relates to trade. I think a lot of it has to do with distance, uh, geographic distance, and a lot of it has to do with the absence of effective uh, transportation links, both by sea and by air. Invariably, from that part of the world, most trade has to go through sometimes two, maybe more countries before it gets to us, and every stop, of course, adds to the cost. So transportation links globally is always a problem. And uh, the more stops we have to make before goods and services can arrive where they need to arrive, the more difficult it becomes, the more costly it becomes. I think, however, that our relationship goes well beyond trade. I think uh, the relationship with India is one that we cherish. I would want to go on record. Minister Brantley had the opportunity to use that platform to openly thank the government of India for its generosity during the pandemic, for facilitating the timely distribution of vaccines to St. Kitts and Nevis and the wider Caribbean. And allow me please to use your widely viewed platform to say thank you to the government and people of India. Prime Minister Modi was very generous. He came here at the United Nations in 2019 and uh, had a meeting with CARICOM leaders and expressed the interest of India to work more closely with the Caribbean. And in the height of this pandemic, even as India itself was suffering the ravages of COVID-19, we were very impressed that he came forward and offered us vaccines. And those vaccines allowed us in St. and Nevis and most of the Caribbean to commence the vaccination process. The Indian government bilaterally was able to deliver vaccines to us and to our people. 
And so I'm here in New York today, fully vaccinated with AstraZeneca made by the Serum Institute in India. And for that, we are truly grateful. And I wanted to express that. The interview in its entirety can be viewed on the YouTube channel of WIAN. The St. Kitts National Youth Parliament Association, SCANIPA, hosted a groundbreaking ceremony on Saturday for Phase 1 of the SCANIPA Vision Pack at Five Ways as part of its 20th anniversary celebrations. According to a statement, the SCANIPA Vision Pack will be an eco-friendly space that people in the community and nearby college students can utilize. The pack will also educate and promote the vision of SCANIPA and increase the level of awareness of the association's work. Remarks were delivered by outgoing president Patrice Harris, who spoke of the significance of the PAC's location. By coincidence that we would have chosen to have our vision park here in the Matt Knight community, but we recognize that this is a community, although it is in the central part of St. Kitts, it is still a community that requires so much love and so much involvement and that is why Skaniper felt it important to be able to have our vision park here and on the outskirts of this vision park is the CFBC as well as the Matt Knight Community Center just down this road where Skaniper would have had meetings originally before we had our office where we have meetings now the Development Bank of St. Kitts and Nevis sponsored the initiative and presented a $2,000 check to the association. Phase 2 of the project will involve the installation of stone pavers for the walkway, benches for seating, and a chain link fence, as well as the erection of a monument of the association's two founding fathers, Dr. the Honorable Jeffrey Hanley and the late Desmond Eli Ward. And finally on the local scene, over the weekend, friends and well-wishers paid tribute to the late entrepreneur, Gloria Vera, with a memorial outside the entrance to her business, Stepin, on Fort Street. Mrs. Vera passed away on September 24th, and as a show of love and support, cads, flowers, and wreaths were put on display in her honor. Chamber President Giselle Matthews' business, Harpers, was located next to Stepin, and she said over the years she became very close to Mrs. Vera. She had great style um, and aesthetics. She brought a certain level of store to Bastyr in terms of her layout and her creativity. Gloria was just a really genuine, kind, graceful, elegant woman and mostly a woman of God. She was extremely godly and she, you know, let you know of her faith. Mrs. Matthews said she was well loved by vendors and customers alike as both a businesswoman and a person. Mrs. Vera operated in Bastyr for more than 25 years. She was also active in the Methodist Church St. Kitts Circuit, the Business and Professional Women Organization, the St. Christopher Outreach Center, and the Jamaica St. Kitts Association. Coming up in regional news, a vaccine mandate could be coming for Jamaica. The details when we come back. Here are your hostess value mat IG value club blue tag specials. Running September 23rd to October 6th. Langer's cranberry juices $9.99. Riceroni or pastoroni $5.99. Snap pack four pack $4.99. Florida natural orange juice $12.99. Planet oat milk $9.99. Wishbone salad dressings $9.99 each. And now our very low weekly value deals. Super chill soda $6.99. Lay stack chips $4.99. Peter pan peanut butter $10.99. Boost nutritional drinks $7.99. IG essential everyday complex $6.99. Moitran ramen noodles just $0.99. Cents. Shop smart, shop value man. Want to get away? Now you can. Stop standing in long ATM lines to withdraw cash. Use your national debit or black cards to complete a wide variety of transactions at supermarkets, variety stores, gas stations, pharmacies, and more. 
Shop online at the most popular websites and stores for quality brands using your national debit or black cards. And take back your time to enjoy all the things that you love to do. Remember, instead of waiting in long ATM lines to withdraw cash, use your national bank cards today. National Bank. Always here. Summer is ending, but the deals are just beginning with the court's end of summer sale. Get up to 50% off your favorite items to include patio furnishings, pools, coolers, TVs, mattresses, and more. Plus, shop today with the ready finance and pay nothing for 60 days. Take advantage of these sizzling summer deals for a limited time only. Shop in store and online at shopcourts.com. Conditions apply. Courts, bringing value home. We move now to news on the regional scene. The Prime Minister of Jamaica, Andrew Holness, has given the clearest indication that a COVID-19 vaccine mandate could be implemented in the very near future. Kelisha Williams reports. Outrage in the streets of downtown Kingston on Wednesday as scores of protesters made it clear they are not in support of a COVID-19 vaccine mandate. In the latest RJR Gleena Don Anderson poll, 70% of respondents also said no to making the vaccines mandatory. Prime Minister Andrew Holness has been insisting the government is not considering a vaccine mandate at this time. But during a tour in Trelawney on Friday, it probably will emerge in the very near future. The government is contemplating how this could be done. We have uh, asked for advice from the Attorney General's office, and that advice is being developed. Mr. Holness stressed that before that can be done, the government is ramping up its public education campaign. And more than that, we must make vaccinations available and it must be convenient to get vaccinated and that is what we are working on now on monday carmed group limited became the latest company in the island to implement a vaccine mandate for staff it came amidst mounting criticisms from trade unionists who believe it's a breach of the workers rights however attorney general marlene malahu fort is supporting the initiative employers are under a duty to ensure a safe system of work so think about it if persons are coming in and putting others at risk the employers do have a duty to take action if employees have to interact with the public and the public is going to be put at risk there is also a responsibility to take action employers like carmed who have made the vaccine mandatory have also given staff the option to present a negative covid 19 test weekly or bi-weekly the option of taking a vaccine that um is medically safe and scientifically safe from all indications and prevents extreme illness and hospitalization is one of the options of containing spread of the virus. So I can't see anything unreasonable of an employer saying, if you choose not to take the vaccine, then you also must show that you are COVID negative because a COVID positive person is going to put others with whom they come into contact at risk. Kalisha Williams, TVJ News. Prime Minister of Antigua and Barbuda, Honorable Gaston Brown, has outlined his commitment to Barbuda, insisting no other leader has shown as much devotion as he has. I will say here categorically that there is no leader that this country has seen, even our best leaders of here, that has shown more commitment to the Barbuda people. Than During a house handover ceremony in Barbuda earlier this week, Prime Minister Gaston Brown said he's been the most devoted to the sister isle. He says these are some of the benefits Barbudans are reaping. You have literally built greater resilience, not only by building back better, but better energy resilience with the solar Baltic plant. You're also getting a new airport that will be able to accommodate international traffic. And perhaps the crown jewel is that Barbuda currently has the largest private sector project taking place in the Caribbean. The Peace, Love and Happiness Luxury Resort development is taking place in Barbuda. Prime Minister Brown says Barbudans should be grateful. That you ought to give thanks. Give thanks to those who made it happen. 
and primarily this effort was driven by my administration. He says officials report so far Barbuda has recovered by 80% following Hurricane Irma's devastation in 2017. Jessica Russell, ABS News. Coming up, R. Kelly found guilty. We'll tell you more when we come back. Imagine having the luxury of putting all your trust in one insurance company and being able to enjoy a life to the fullest without having to worry. Well, don't imagine. National Caribbean Insurance is here to take care of all your insurance needs. Insure your life, vehicle, boat, home, belongings, and your future. At NCI, we make it our business to ensure that you enjoy every stage in life. We serve, we protect, we satisfy. That's NCI. Welcome back. U.S. singer R. Kelly has been found guilty of running a scheme to exploit his fame to sexually abuse women and children over two decades. More in this report. Okay, it's one charge of racketeering, as you said, other eight charges of sex trafficking. And you might hear racketeering and think, isn't that for mafia bosses? But this was part of a unique strategy on the part of federal prosecutors to introduce sexual assault allegations that were well outside the statute of limitations. And at the center of this case, Lester, was the story of Aaliyah, a pop singer who many people know died tragically in a plane crash in 2001. According to testimony, she met R. Kelly when she was just 12 years old. A witness, a compelling witness for the prosecution said that she actually walked in on R. Kelly performing a sex act with Aaliyah when she was either 13 or 14 years old. We then heard from one of his employees that at the age of 15, he bribed an official in Illinois to get a fake ID so that Aaliyah could marry R. Kelly at the time, who was 27, because he suspected Aaliyah may be pregnant, and if they married, she could not actually give any testimony against him in a statutory rape charges. But it concludes dozens of, of witnesses coming forward with depraved allegations of abuse, physical, emotional, sexual, a number of alleged victims. And as you said, this was a trial that lasted weeks, but prosecutors argued that this was actually something that was decades in the making. His defense over the course of the trial tried to portray the victims in this case as out opportunists who were looking for money and fame. But very clearly here in the end, the jury decided the prosecution had made its case. Indian farmers opposed to reforms say they threaten their livelihoods, renewed their push against the changes with nationwide protests on Monday, a year after laws on the liberalization of the sector were introduced. For 10 months, tens of thousands of farmers have camped out on major highways around the capital, New Delhi, to oppose the laws in the longest-running growth protest against the government. Here's more. Farmers across India renewed their push against agricultural reform on Monday, holding their first countrywide protest. Mm. Roads and highways across India were blocked and union rallies held in the streets. After 10 months of demonstrations in New Delhi, they hope that taking the protest nationwide can put pressure on the government. We have even more enthusiasm today than we did on the first day and we'll never lose it. We wanted to strike nationwide against the three farm laws and it's going ahead successfully. This resurgence in the movement comes on the first anniversary that the controversial laws passed in Parliament. A year ago, the Indian government dismantled agricultural rules, allowing cultivators to sell to private markets for any price. The government argues that this would modernize the sector and help growers get better prices. But the farmers say the reform would erode the long-term mechanism that guarantees a minimum price, allowing big companies to drive down prices which would leave farmers struggling. Ten rounds of talks between farm union leaders and the government have failed to break the deadlock. Whilst Prime Minister Modi has suggested tweaking the laws, the farmers refuse to budge saying they'll only accept a full repeal. India's farming industry sustains more than half of the 1.3 billion population and accounts for about 15% of their $2.7 trillion economy. I'm next in sports, Gabriel Aying return from injury setback and sumo wrestling champion to retire. Stay with us.
Imagine having the luxury of putting all your trust in one insurance company and being able to enjoy a life to the fullest without having to worry. Well, don't imagine. National Caribbean Insurance is here to take care of all your insurance needs. Insure your life, vehicle, boat, home, belongings, and your future. At NCI, we make it our business to ensure that you enjoy every stage in life. We serve, we protect, we satisfy. That's NCI. First up in sports, West Indies fast bowler Shannon Gabriel is eyeing a return to the international setup ahead of the team's tour of Sri Lanka later this year. German Brown tells us more. Shannon Gabriel missed the West Indies' last test series against Pakistan at Sabina Park after picking up an injury against South Africa in June. It has been the third injury setback for the 33-year-old in the last year, which has led to questions about his place in the team. Speaking in an exclusive interview with CNC3 Sports on Saturday, the Trinidadian says he is mystified as to the reasons for his continuous injury problems. I wouldn't say it's a fitness issue because even the, fit of, fit, the fittest of us um, get injured sometimes, but that's the way it goes sometimes. Um, it is frustrating because you know you're doing everything that is possible to um, stay on the park and still these issues come up, so it gets frustrating at times. Gabriel has returned to training in the last few weeks with the help of a personal trainer, and he's once again eyeing a place in the West Indies setup. I'm um, actually just taking a time off from everything. I um, had a few weeks off, just even the cricket, I rest a little bit, um, just clear my mind. Um, but now, for the past two weeks, I've been started back training, so it's been good so far. And during his time off the field, Gabriel has had the opportunity to look at young sensation and fellow Trinidadian Jaden Seals, who might be the person to keep him out of the West Indies team following his recent performance against Pakistan. It's really exciting for him, um, for West Indies cricket. Um, I think he's someone special and I hope he goes from strength to strength and they keep learning as he goes along. I know it's just three games. Um, that he played so far, but he's been impressive in three games, so at least he has something to work for. And um, you can see that he's hungry for success, so that's always a good sign. Gabriel has so far taken 159 wickets in 55 tests for the West Indies. Japanese media is reporting that sumo wrestling's greatest champion is set to retire. Hakuho 36 leaves the ring with a record number of wins, all the more impressive considering he started as an outsider. Al Jazeera's Dorsa Jabari has more on the story of the most decorated wrestler in sumo history. For 20 years, Yokozuna Hakuho has set records that will stand in Japan's traditional sport for decades. But advancing age and injuries have forced the 36-year-old to step out of the ring for the final time. Hakuho's last event was in July, when he took home a record 45th championship. 13 more than any other. All the more impressive, considering he was an outsider when he started. I was lucky to have sumo instinct when I started. My father was a grand champ at Mongolian sumo, and he was a silver medalist at the Mexico Olympics in wrestling. I grew up watching him, so I think I have a little of his DNA in me. But when I first joined, I was very skinny and small, and I had a hard time eating. But as I got bigger and bigger, and higher and higher up the ladder, I still had a problem winning, strength-wise. And I couldn't speak Japanese then, so there were a lot of hurdles that I had to clear. Like these young sumo wrestlers, Hakuho was born in Mongolia and had to rise through the ranks. He became just the second Mongolian-born grand champion, with many of the older Japanese generation unhappy about what they saw as foreigners taking over the sport. But despite dominating in the ring, Hakuho believes it's important to be humble, as he explained to Al Jazeera in an interview back in 2008. If I may borrow one old grand champion's words, being a grand champion is a destiny. So you just have to be what you are. There are only two grand champs, but they are above all other wrestlers. So you have to be more than just strong. You have to have charisma and manners and be a role model for the other wrestlers. 
And that could be what he'll do next. Having been given Japanese citizenship in 2019, Hakuho is reportedly considering opening a stable in Japan to train young wrestlers to show gratitude to his beloved sport. Dorsa Jabari, Al Jazeera. And that's it for sports. So when we come back, we'll have another look at the stories that made the headlines. The Prime Minister of St. Kitts and Nevis, Dr. the Honorable Timothy Harris, wants to alert the public about fake Facebook and social media accounts that are circulating. These sites may look genuine, but they're not. These fake sites may use the Prime Minister's photo and name, but their only intention is to spread misinformation through false and scandalous information. Some of these pages are scams and will attempt to dupe you out of money. Do not trust them. You can find the real Prime Minister Harris on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram by searching for his official handle, which is at PMHarrisKN. Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram pages that claim to be the Prime Minister's but do not have PMHarrisKN right after the forward slash are fake accounts. These should be reported to the respective social media sites. You can also report fake social media accounts to pressec at gov.kn. That's P R E S S S E C at G O V dot K N. Facebook has verified Prime Minister Harris's official page by placing a white check mark inside a blue circle next to the Prime Minister's name, Dr. the Honorable Timothy Harris. This blue circle appears just above at PM Harris KN. Also, be alert. If the person claiming to be either the Prime Minister or another government official asks you for money through instant messenger, direct message, or any other means, this is a scam and not a real charity. This public service announcement was produced in order to help you be an informed social media user. Protect yourself and help spread the message. And we're wrapping up with a recap of the top stories. Police investigating armed robbery in Nevis. Abattoir acquires new refrigerated truck. And Prime Minister to hold multi-press conference on Tuesday. And that's the end of the Zalazar Channel 5 newscast. Thank you for joining us. I'm Kyle Verge. Goodbye.